Someone just fell down on the stairs.
Nixon Bank reminds me of one of the very early votes we had after Ronald Reagan was elected president in 1981. This came up, and there was a coalition of the Republicans and the conservative Democrats were working together, and they were cutting things. Most of the time, it was cutting the proposed increase. But anyway, it looked like things were getting cut, so I can remember uh, one congressman getting up. He's all right, you guys are cutting all this good good welfare, this, all the welfare benefits, what we need to do is cut some corporate welfare. So he proposed that we cut, you know, a, a large percentage of the Export-Import Bank. It had passed by over 100 votes. And I thought, wow, maybe, maybe we're on to something here. Maybe, maybe there will be a, a real difference uh, in, in the 80s. And, and, uh, and yet uh, there was a lot of talk afterwards, and they, people who, uh, who really were concerned about it got together, and they said, we can reverse this. We're going to reverse this vote. And the next day, they had it. A hundred people changed their votes and changed it and put the money back in. And I, I recall, this is so typical of what happens in Washington. The Washington, Time, Washington Post had interviewed, it was interviewing one member. He said, well, you voted, uh, you know, to cut it yesterday. Today, you voted to put it back in. He says, does that mean your vote is up for sale? And the congressman, with a straight face, says, no, but it's up for rent. That's, 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 that's why uh, we need uh, people of principle that will stand. And that's why I was, of course, uh, very biased. I was glad to see my son win. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to see uh, her bills win. Uh, so <laughs> to take something like that. It, uh, the one remark I made, uh, being back, uh, I've been on the campaign trail for so long, I said, you know, being in D.C., this is depressing. <laughs> you know? I said, I, I, I need to go to Minnesota and get cheered up. <laughs> campuses, you've heard me say many times, there is a revolution in ideas going on. And uh, it, it isn't a narrow uh, revolution. It isn't just sort of a conservative group of the Republican Party. It's much, much bigger than this. I am convinced that, you know, we have a good support in the Republican Party for this uh, liberty idea, the liberty ideas. But I am also convinced from traveling around the country, I talk to, go to going through airports that I am convinced for every vote we get in the Republican primaries there's at least two out there that are independent or even Democrats who will look at these serious principles of limited government personal liberty less war and doing something with the Federal Reserve System <laughs> Whether 
it's diminished through what they put in the National Defense Appropriation Act, Authorization Act, whether it's the Patriot Act or whatever they're doing to do these good things for you. None of it can be financed without, uh, you know, the shenanigans through the uh, Federal Reserve System. So as government gets bigger, your liberties are diminished. And that is what government should be all about. Government should be very limited. And we know it precisely what the government should be there for. And the founders knew this, and it, it is not to manage the entitlement system. It is not meant to police the world. It was there to protect our liberties against any encroachment. session that had been predicted by a few people, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was a, uh, an eye-opener for a lot of people. Yeah, the debt is, is too bad, the recession is very bad, it's probably a lot worse than the government is admitting the unemployment rate is much bit bigger than ever, but now people are starting to say there's something deeply flawed with the system, and if they're not on the take, the people are sick and tired of it. I am delighted that there are so many, and especially the whole generation, that are talking about this. And uh, for this reason, I remain an optimist on this, precariously so, because I have to go to Washington every once in a while. <laughs> I have to listen to that. But, uh, but governments reflect with the people. Um, it, might, it might surprise you, but most members of Congress aren't, don't have deeply held beliefs. Can you imagine Minnesota. <laughs> No, they, they are, but and their ideas are more or less to how you stay in office. Well, it's up to us to say how you stay in office as you do this, A, B, and C, and you obey the Constitution, and then they'll pay more attention. If not, then you replace them. <laughs> Some people will talk about economic liberty and some talk about personal liberty. Why isn't that one and the same? It's the same thing. If you have a right to your life and a right to your values, your right to your church, your right to read your own books, you, have, you should have a right to your own body, which you put in your own body, and you ought to have a, a right to spend your money the way you want as well. something I saw in the audience here just a minute ago that we will know when the republic is returned to us that is you'll be allowed to drink raw milk whenever you want to <laughs> them and setting an example where other countries would want to emulate us. So our, me our message is great. It's an American message. It, do it does need to be renewed. It is revolutionary in the, in the sense of an intellectual revolution and non-violence, but we can change it by changing people's mind, and that is what's happening. So there's every reason to be optimistic about what 
what is happening in the country, but it also means that if you have discovered exactly what's going on and they need to changes, we need you active because you're in a, a minority. If you take the whole state right now, you're still in a minority, but you have a lot to say about it. You're influenced by ideas. And so that is the role. Everybody has a role to play and nobody knows exactly what it'll be. It might be helping somebody to get elected to the Senate and uh, running for elections and supporting other people, teaching or whatever, but there's always a role. But I think the most important thing is try to understand how the world works. I became, and I feel grateful that I became curious in the 50s and the 60s, how does this thing work? You know, and what is the plain truth of things? And for years and years, I tried to understand it. And I think that's the most important thing that we all, the information is available to us. In the 50s and the 60s, there was no internet. It was hard to find these books. There were hardly any professors. Today, there's a lot of professors teaching about what true liberty is and what the economic problems are. So the information is out there and in some ways you should be comfortable. I'm comfortable enough that you will pursue it because I think the burden is greater on you who know what the problems are and you you know know the answers, you study them and you can offer it and you won't have to worry exactly what you have to do because somebody will make use of your talents. That is what I encourage and to be grateful that we still have a country that we can still get together and have elections and work together. So this to me is still wonderful and we see a revival in something I think has made this country great and if we pursue this I think it will give us the greatest chance for peace and prosperity in America. Okay guys, I'm cutting this out, because I'm going behind the scenes. All of you know that the Congressman will actually be around tomorrow, actually doing a very, very reasonable price fundraiser for your Republican Party tomorrow morning. $20! It's Okay guys, I uh, save this, uh, you can download it, and uh, I'll see if I can bring up a live stream later. I'm going to go uh, up to the war room and see what's going on, alright? Bye. Will be available.